Hello YouTube, and welcome to another Doctor Who product review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Universal Sonic remote from the One Company, this version being the 10th Doctor Universal remote. Now this product has been out for quite a while, but I decided to get it this Christmas as it's a product that I've been wanting for quite a while now. I finally got my hands on it, and what a lovely product it is. The product itself comes in this really nice stylish box, as you can see it's rather simplistic and it's got a white background on. The sonic screwdriver at the top there has been made in this really nice glossy effect with the faded Gallifrey and text in the background there. By far this box is possibly one of the best presentation boxes that any of the sonic screwdrivers have came in so far. At the front we have the Doctor's dates along with the 50th anniversary logo and the title of the product. Both sides the 50th anniversary logo is printed. On the back of the box we have some of the examples of the functions that this product can do. And then at the very bottom of the box we do have some directory image stuff as well as some company information at the bottom there. Then on the inside of this we actually have the box itself that houses the product. Now this is a really nice travel case and is definitely one of the things that attracted me to the Sonic Screwdriver over the others. As you can see it's just this plain black box but at the top here we do have this engraving of the Sonic Screwdriver. You might be able to faintly see that, but as you can see you have the Sonic Screwdriver there edged into the plastic which is really nice with this glossy effect added over the top. And then at the very bottom you have the Wand Company logo also engraved. Now upon opening the product, all of the Sonic Screwdriver parts are housed inside. As you can see this foam effect has been added to sort of house all the different parts. And we have the main Sonic Screwdriver in the middle there, as well as the USB that can be wrapped up into a small holster. And then removing the foam panels beneath also reveals the base and the instructions. The case itself is really nice and houses all of the products inside really nicely and safely. If you're wanting to take your sonic screwdriver somewhere to say conventions or something, this is a perfect way to keep it secure, which is a brilliant idea from the one company. And I'd highly recommend this sonic screwdriver for this one reason, because the other ones don't actually come with it, but this one does. Which is a great feature, and once again with it being small, I guess they can use it as an advantage. Taking a look at the instructions now, these aren't any instructions, they are a fully designed blueprint instruction. Now, as you can see on the inside, we have all this Gallifrey text as well as some labels, accompanied by a really nice blueprint image of the Sonic Screwdriver. This has been detailed really well, obviously these aren't the instructions themselves, but it's a really nice addition to the actual instructions, making them look more appealing. On the opposite side, however, we do have all of the instructions. Now, to be honest, all of this writing does put me off slightly. As you can see, it's been accompanied by some really nice diagrams as well as images of the product, as well as some examples of the hand gestures and coding that you can use the sonic screwdriver for. Overall for the instructions they are actually quite easy to follow and they are quite welcome and it isn't really too in depth or anything which is nice because you don't want to be drowned out with a ton of information all at once. All of the different sections is separated underneath different topics and things making it really easy to follow as well as it being quite welcoming as well because all of the images and things do sort of help. On to the actual product itself now and doesn't it look amazing? Now this is actually a one to one scale replica of the sonic screwdriver as seen in the show. It's been taken from scans of the actual product that David Tennant has, so therefore this is probably technically the cheapest replica on the market at the moment for a 10th Doctor Sonic screwdriver. It is exactly to how it is in the show, and it can actually control a TV, unlike the prop, so it is a very accurate piece of merchandise. Taking a look at the prop itself closely, as you can see it looks exactly like the 10th Doctor Sonic screwdriver, and has a lot of different bits of detailing. Starting off at the handle section, now this has actually been made out of plastic rather than the rest which is metal. Similar to the toy, the cracks and things have actually been engraved into the plastic which is technically inaccurate as I do believe in the show they are painted on but I still don't mind as I do believe that this actually looks better than them being painted on as I'm guessing in the show it does get enhanced and things and does probably look better on camera but yeah I'm glad that they've actually done this as it makes the product look a lot more appealing. I do like the way that this has also been engraved into the plastic as it makes the texture feel a lot more interesting and also a lot more detailed. The handle itself is quite smooth until we get to this bottom piece as you can see we do have sort of this engraved area here as well as sort of these little delves into the plastic. Now this has been done really nice nicely and once again sets off the product really well. The front we also have this little strip of blue which quite honestly I don't have a clue what it is. I believe you can sort of read things off it or data I don't know but yeah, it's sort of like a blue strip. As you can see this is sort of once again been actually set into the plastic and we have the blue in the background there and once again does look really nice. And moving on to the scrolling piece as you can see this has been done really well. We have the actual button there on the handle which is amazing for somebody who's been deprived of the character option sonic screwdriver since about 2007. That is very exciting. They've actually put the button in the right place. Moving on to the emitter now, as you can see this has been done excellently. It's been made actually out of metal which makes it have this really nice sort of shiny effect which is brilliant. It makes it look real almost and we have all these different panels and curves and things which is brilliant as well. At the very base of the handle as you can see we sort of have this top piece. Now this has been done really well actually. This has been sculpted really well out of the metal. Not really too much to talk about but it's been engraved really nicely. We do also have this gradual slide to the dip here where we have the different crack things which is brilliant. We also have the teeth in there as well which I will be coming on to a little bit later 
when we extend the sonic but as you can see these have been grilled really nicely and both of the parts fit in really snugly together moving on to the top part of the emitter now as you can see this has also been sculpted really nicely with all the different sections and things in there along with like the pillars this has been done really well and then in the very middle we do also have this little pipe now in the universal remote this is actually carrying all the wires to the emitter at the very top which has been actually cursed really well into the sonic as there isn't actually any of it exposed to the actual eye and then finally for the emitter head as you can see once again this has been cased in really well we have this little metal area running all the way around the outside as well as the actual blue emitter itself now i do believe that this is sort of made out of some form of plastic and it does actually rotate for some reason I'm guessing that's just the way that how it's been fixed on but i do believe that that's been made out of plastic it's been done really well nice and round with the blue obviously in there and it does actually hide the light inside pretty well as you can only sort of see it in certain lights which is great so if the one in the actual show scrolling up the slider does reveal the inside column it separates both of the teeth areas and as you can see i just love this bit i love the way that it's been made together top there we sort of have this cylindrical piece which has been fixed on really well along with sort of the inner case which looks very similar to that of the emitter at the top and then we have this section in the middle now this has been made brilliantly it does actually look like glass i don't know if it is but that has been really nicely done as you can see it's all clear and things really nicely sculpted together and then in between this in the middle we of course have this yellow wire it's got this yellow paint added to it which i do believe is accurate some people argue it isn't but in the actual show it does actually tend to be a yellowy color if looking at it closely now unfortunately on mine when scrolling up the slider it does sort of seems to stop here which is a little bit unfortunate so meaning getting it full where you do actually need to push quite hard so i don't really know what that's meant to be as i have seen other ones that seem to move up quite nicely but mine does actually seem to be rather stiff which i'm guessing that maybe from the amount of time that i've used it i don't know but it does actually seem to sort of stop halfway which is a little bit annoying Closing down the emitter is the same way as last time, so just pulling down once again closes the teeth, which as you can see once again fits really well. Moving down to the lower sections of the Sonic now, once again this has been made really well, once different sections in there. The emitter cap itself has actually been made out of plastic, but it still does blend in really well to the material. It's just a black colour and has been sculpted really nicely. Pulling off the black end cap does in fact reveal that this is where the Sonic is charged. The actual end cap itself does come off quite easily, but not too much as it actually falls off, which is great, so that means it does actually stay on the product when needed and then as you can see this reveals the charging port below charging the sonic screwdriver itself is simple in the actual product it does come with a usb meaning it could be connected to anything with a usb port and all you need to do is plug this into your computer and the sonic will charge but with if your sonic is extremely low on power it will say battery cell depleting however this only cancels out the tv functions it can constantly be used as an actual toy which will come into in a few minutes the actual sonic is plugged in as you can see it does light up red and then once it's fully charged it will change to green so moving on to the sonic's features now turning the sonic on is simple just holding down on the main button on the emitter so moving on to practice mode this basically allows you to sort of control the sonic without doing anything so moving it in simple gestures makes the female voice say what gesture has just been performed The next mode that I'm going to go on to is the sound effects mode. Now this is essentially making the product a toy. Now clicking down to FX mode and then holding down on double press will then allow you to perform a few sound effects and certain gestures are made. So the standard buzzing sound can be made when the button is pressed down. All of the sounds made vary from both the new series and the classic series. A few of the iconic ones in there is sort of the buzzing sound in the high pitch one from the Sea Devils. That's one of my personal favourites. And all of them can be activated by making different hand gestures and different turning signals with the sonnet screwdriver. Much like how you would do when controlling your TV. Moving on to programming the Sonic now, you need to do this personally because obviously it needs to be programmed to your remote that you want to replace. Now, you can use either remote even when this Sonic is programmed, obviously. It's just a case of wanting to make the certain movements to allow the Sonic to do a certain thing. Now, that means that it does take a little bit of a while to get used to personally. I still can't get the hang of it. I needed to get Matthew from the Who Addicts to do it whilst he was around. But yeah, the sure thing itself does sort of confuse me. But once you actually get to it, you can sort of program it yourself and it does become easy in the end. Going over it very briefly, what it 
involves doing is programming the hand gesture into the device, pointing it towards the infrared light in the remote, and then it will hopefully accept the signal. Now, I'm obviously not going to program it as I've already technically got it programmed, but I will be showing you some of the movements that the Sonic is able to do with certain things. So, moving on to the programming now, as of the other Sonic screwdrivers, you do this yourself. So, there we go, I've accidentally just turned over the TV to the other channel, so going back up again. We have, there we are, channel up and channel down going as so, and now messing up the TV completely. Then we also have volume up and down as well, that includes turning as so. There we go. And they also have volume up as well, which does a similar thing as well. Now we've got a really loud TV, this isn't going very well, is it? So then we go and turn down again. The things can include sliding to rewind and things like so. There we go, there's the TV rewinding back. They can even have such things as pulling back to pause and play as well. There is quite a lot of different things you can do, it is quite complicated to start with as you can see even though I'm struggling with it a little bit, but overall it does generally get to be quite easy over time and I think that overall when you actually do get used to it, it can be a very useful thing, but to start with it does get quite confusing. Turn to the instructions now, as you can see it gives the examples of all 13 gestures that the Sonic can make, as well as the 39 different commands that this Sonic can actually hold over the three different memory banks that it has, so there is quite a lot of programming there, and if you do make a mistake or want to sort of reset the Sonic completely, perhaps if you use up all three computer banks, a factory reset is also available, which is my main worries with this product in case you could actually fill all the memory banks and then the Sonic would be rendered useless. For all having this personally now for a few weeks, I can sort of say that I feel that this is sometimes quite hard to use. I will be honest, I think that to start with you will find yourself sort of struggling on how to use it because I certainly did, but I do find that over time and there is evidence of this, you do tend to be more comfortable with the Sonic screwdriver. Now the movements and things do sort of take a while to program and things and it is sort of best to have quite obvious commands to start with, so for example turning anti-clockwise and clockwise for volume up and down, up and even moving up and down for channel moving up and down, things like that, just general things that you can actually remember as well, don't make it too complicated as that will just make it difficult for yourself. If you can remember them maybe even write them down something like that just allowing it to be easier and then the things that are on and off as well can be done with clicks and things which will be easier to do what I would recommend to start with is maybe programming four or something in and then sort of getting used to them maybe programming the other ones in after that as well just to sort of get you used to the sonic slowly i guess as to start with it is actually quite a struggle to use Sonic itself also comes with a base. Now, by far, this is the best base that all three of the different Doctor Who Sonics have came with so far. As you can see, it's great. It's actually made of metal, and it is a really nice little plinth for the thing to be displayed on. As you can see, it's a Gallifrey text thing with it engraved 3D into the actual metal itself. I don't actually know if that says anything. Maybe nice if it said number 10, which are the big chief figures or something. But as you can see, that's been engraved in really well, and the paint apps that have been given to this, are, well, I don't even think they are paint apps, but the actual metal colour is great as well and fits in really nicely. And at the bottom of this, you do also have this really nice felt text textured material. Now when on a base this allows for it not to slide all over the place which is nice so the actual Sonic itself is really nicey and safe when on display. The base itself is in fact magnetic, now this means that the Sonic can be placed down on display meaning it can be stored horizontally. Putting the Sonic on the base, as you can see, the actual magnet itself is actually off-centre from the middle, which is something that I personally didn't expect to start with, but I think that is an obvious choice, as this way you can see the girlfriend text engraved underneath on the actual base itself. I do really like the way that the company has decided to actually display the Sonic upright, as that means it looks nice, but also saves space as well, so it's quite efficient, really. And it also just generally looks quite dramatic as well, it shows off all the angles, which is great, and it looks generally brilliant on display. It also seems to be a running theme with the other one company remotes from the Doctor Who line that they've released so far, meaning that when displayed together they look quite consistent, which is great and something that I really do like. So overall for this product, I honestly think I would be extremely incorrect if I said I didn't like it, because I think it is brilliant. I think the detail on it is amazing. I just love the way that it's actually been scaled from the initial David Tennant prop, one of the last ones to actually exist. And I do generally think that overall, I think that for the price this is absolutely stunning. I believe I got this for about £50, maybe even below that of 40 I can't even remember. But this product overall for the price is probably one of the best on the market at the moment for a replica sonic screwdriver. I know there is a few more from rubber toe replicas and things like that around which are accurate I guess and a lot more accurate to the ones as seen in the show and are actually built as seen as the ones as seen in the show but I do generally think for the price this is absolutely stunning because it is a highly detailed product. Scale wise it's accurate and brilliant and I do generally think that it is a lot more accurate and I think that overall you cannot go wrong for the price tag that this is asking for and on top of that it controls the TV 
which the actual one doesn't so i think that you can't go wrong with it overall it looks great the features are brilliant i love the fx mode i do generally like the way as well that even though this one is smaller i like the way that this one can actually be charged for a usb it makes it look very more handy very more modern and not to mention the brilliant display case and the stand that comes with this which makes it by far the most superior sonic screwdriver out of the three universe remotes so far and i cannot wait to see what we're in the future i would love to see the usb effect carried on to the future to orthodox sonic screwdriver which i'm guessing that they'll be releasing at some point and i just love how modern this is and even though it's smaller it has so much more features compared to that of the other versions so thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed it please do give it a big like please subscribe if you're not already if any questions please do leave them below and i'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future thanks again for watching i shall see you all next time so thanks for watching and bye for now